Well, I've started setting solar panels and it's not nearly as easy as I thought it was going to be, not nearly as much fun as I thought this was going to be. Part of that is that these panels being bifacial have glass on both the front and back side, which makes them about 50%, at least 50% heavier than a standard panel. So I think they're around 55 pounds per panel is what I've got now. Um, so getting them up there and then holding them in place while I do some drilling and putting in some screws, uh, like I say, it's been challenging. In fact, that's some of the nicest words that have come out of my mouth on the first four panels. Got two more panels to set on the upper row. And then the one challenge that I can see on the lower row is there's one screw that's going to be really difficult to get at because I'm either going to have to stretch across the side, which is a three and a half foot stretch, or reach up from the bottom, which is, uh, gosh, over five, well, around five feet. So that one's not going to be easy to do. I'm going to have to figure out some way of supporting myself while I, while I um, do those fasteners. I'm actually double fastening at each connection, first with a Renogy solar panel connector. And I'm doing that. You can see up there that I've already done that on those. And then uh, after that, I am putting, uh, connecting additionally with this one here. And it's got some teeth on the back that are supposed to bite into the anodizing on the aluminum uh, to make an electrical connection, which would bond all these together. Now, I look at that and I kind of wonder if it actually works or not. So I am also going to be running a ground wire that will connect all 12 panels together too. Those will go both to the ground rod um, that I've already driven and then um, through the conduit into the house and uh, tie into uh, my ground on the main panel. I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, you could see some funny things, me falling, hopefully not me dropping a panel. I think I'm about as aggravated as I care to be putting up those upper panels. My shoulders and working overhead are not getting along well, so I need to take a break from this uh, so I don't end up dropping a panel or something like that. I'm hoping that that lower half's going to be a lot easier just because most of that I'm able to do from waist level or lower. Um, as I mentioned before, the one thing I do have concern over is how do I reach that uh, one odd screw. I'll be back at some point. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the uh, 
frogs are going crazy in the pond behind me. That's the neighbor's pond. And they're on mine too. Must be breeding season or something because they sure make a lot of noise. And we have tree frogs, little tiny tree frogs I've seen in my pond. And then um, oh, the bullfrogs don't get very large here, but uh, I don't know what species they are. I don't know enough about frogs, but it's kind of fun to listen to them. All the solar panels now have been set. I'm pretty happy to have that done. The lower panels fortunately went much easier than what the upper ones did. I had hoped to get wire pulled in uh, today because it's supposed to just absolutely pour overnight. Um, but there might be a break in it tomorrow where I can get a chance to do that. I'm starting to run out of light, so I don't think that I'll end up getting it done today. I am going to go ahead and mark the ends of those two befores and get those all cut off so it looks a little bit better. I did check uh, the polarity on the back of everything to make sure everything plugs together properly without having to run any long extension cords and fortunately I got them all in the right position so that that's working. Um, I don't know too much else to say but uh, I'll be back to close out the episode maybe once I get uh, the control panel or the disconnect hooked up here and the wire pulled in. Okay, I am ready to pull some wire uh, between rainstorms while it's somewhat dry. I've already got my fish tape through from the barn to the solar panel array here, so I'll be pulling from the panel array to back to the barn. I'll have four 10 gauge conductors and then one 8 gauge ground wire uh, to be bonded to the panel. What I'm using here are, I already said it, um, Canadian solar panels, 445 watt bifacial panels. And each of these have an open circuit voltage of 48.9 volts. And that's assuming that you've got sun shining on them. The NEC, um, it would be, I guess, NEC section 290.7 says that you have to rate that voltage uh, for temperature. And my minimum temperature, I think, I saw minus 9 degrees last year, and that's probably about as cold as it's ever been here. So I have to up that voltage by 20%. So multiplying the voltage times 20%, I have six of them in series. I will have a total of maximum voltage of uh, 352 volts going through each wire. Uh, this wire is rated at 600 volts, so I'm in good shape there. For amperage, uh, since we're in series, we don't have to up the amperage. Well, we don't have to up the amperage because of being connected together anyway. So these things have a short circuit voltage of 11.54 amps. And the NEC section 690.8 um, says that we have to up the amperage by 25% because there could be additional sunlight or reflection off of snow and such that could... Um, could end up getting more amperage out of them. I don't know if that'll ever happen. Uh, stuff that I've tested on my panels up at the cabin have always been less than what they're rated at. But anyway, um, 11.54 amps times 1.25 is 14.4 amps would be the maximum amperage. Now, a, a 90 degree rated cable, a 14 gauge would probably have been plenty. I've got about a 120 foot run and uh, so 10 gauge is more than going to take care of that. So we'll go inside and I'll start pulling. For the safety of firefighters, the NEC requires that there be a disconnecting means within 10 feet of the panel, so that's what that is. I have checked that to make sure that it's working. I have tested the voltage coming out on both sides and that's at about 285 volts. It's a cloudy day so that's probably pretty good. Um, and then also I didn't mention that there is a 20 amp fuse on the positive side for each set of uh, solar panels. Okay, I'm all set to start pulling. I would be really surprised if I didn't have to go back and forth quite a bit. I'm doing this alone so I don't have anyone feeding on the other end. I wish I had an empty roller spool to run the wire over, but I don't. Um, right now I've got all 125 feet laid out in the grass. 
but this stranded cable tends to get kind of tangled at the end, so I'm sure it's not gonna go real easy not without some guidance on the other side. So here I go. You can't help it. Okay, I'm getting near the end. I had to do a bunch of untangling that last time around. It's getting caught up in some sticks and stuff and making it a little harder to pull. I gotta go take care of that. I'll be right back. I have about 30 feet left. Something that I did so that I won't be guessing or testing when I'm hooking things up is I color coded all of the ends of the wires um, on both ends uh, so that I'd know which is which and uh, which goes to which panel and that sort of thing, positive and negative. Okay, I still have a box to mount here, a junction box, and then out of that box will be PV cables that run up to the disconnect above. That, and I have to put in all my ground wires on the panels and hook everything up to the ground rod, which is buried right here. That is an eight foot ground rod, and the first six feet drove relatively easily, but oh my goodness, once I got to about six feet, it got really hard to uh, drive. I worked late last night to get things finished on the outside here. It was supposed to start raining last night. It didn't, but it's starting to sprinkle right now. And we're supposed to get a fair amount of rain. So you can see here what I did with grounding the solar panels. I used the connectors that bite into the anodization of the aluminum. And then ran cables on the back of my solar panel framing. Everything is connected. I made all my terminations in this junction box. And then from there I went up with the solar panel wire into the disconnect. And I haven't got those plugged in tight yet, a couple of them, um, until I get things settled inside a bit. And then I'll come in out here, uh, finish plugging those in the rest of the way, and turn on this disconnect. And then we'll check for power inside. But I'm entirely finished now with the outside portion of the solar. We'll end things here, thanking you for joining me. Be with me on the next one. Bye.